Hello, in this session, we will look at how you can calculate a minimal sample size, whether it is for initial data collection or as part of the pilot and trial, whether you have continuous or discrete data with only limited information about your process of population, and I'm assuming limited resources, but still want to make sure you have enough data point for then having a relevant and trusted graphical or statistical analysis. So let's look at how we can do that and why. Most people will be very happy to use this information, but if you are at black belt level and you are speaking with stakeholders that are a bit more sophisticated and you need a formula with confidence interval, then please let me know and I can send you those as well. But this will be very useful to just have a basic conversation with your stakeholders and your team members to ensure they understand why you're taking the effort to collect as many data you have you need and why you need that many data. And not everybody's interested, but if they are starting to buck about, oh, how long it takes and how much effort they have to put in it, the best way to get their engagement is to explain it to them and then get their input in it to it. And that will help you make sure that you have enough data point to do a good graphical analysis and more importantly, statistical analysis. Remember that some tools have a minimum requirement. You might be at a stage, as I said, where you have actually very limited information. You might have to guess estimate to start with. So using Excel, we can use a variety of scenario. And then using those scenario, you can get everybody comfortable with the number of data points that you need to collect, including yourself. This is just sample size conversation. I will have a different video to talk about how you will then select those samples. This is what referred to as a sampling strategy. This is the formula for continuous or variable data. And this is the formula for the discrete or attribute type data. So let's jump over to Excel. So for continuous data, um, as I said, I tend to build it in Excel because I like to have the conversation with my stakeholders. I will remind in plain English what the formula is and explain why we're looking at those things. When it comes to data collection and sample size, the number of data point will be a factor of two things. For continuous data, it will be the standard deviation that we observe in the process and the amount of precision that we want to have on those measurement of performance, whatever that is. So let's go through an example because it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Let's say we have a, an invoicing process measured in calendar days. At the moment, our SMEs tell us that the invoices take anywhere from 10 to 30 days. If your process is normally distributed, we would calculate vaguely that our, our average lead time is going to be 20 days. I'm just going to put it here for information. We don't actually use it in, in a formula as you see above. From there, however, if you think of your average being 20, normally distributed between the 20 and let's say the 30 days, you have 10 days. Now you should have on either side of your mean three standard deviation. So 10 days divided by three is 3.33. If I round up to cope with the extended tail, I'm going to say, I'm assuming this might be a four-day standard deviation. The next question becomes then, how much variation around the measurement accuracy do we want? That's referred to as precision. So if I say my invoicing takes 20 days, sometime it could be 19 days because you could have measurement errors. Sometime it could be 21 days. So that one is plus or minus one. Now, if you become a bit more tolerant and you, let's say you, you want two days or maybe even three days, you see how if your standard deviation increases, but your, con your precision also increases, it does impact the total number of data points you need to collect. OK, so this is where having a scenario, it's really useful to discuss with your stakeholders. Now, this plain English formula, this is how I entered it in Excel. Now, to get the hat sign that effectively does the squaring required in the formula, what you would need to uh, click on is shift. And for most keyboard, it will be the number six and you'll see it and it will come up there. I hope this makes sense. As I said, it's very quick. It should mostly be a refresher for, for most of you. If you have any question, you can always drop me a comment. Now let's have a look at the discrete data. The concept is similar, but obviously we have slightly different characteristics. Now we're going to be looking at a proportion of defect or proportion of defective, and that's typically abbreviated P. And then we will, again, we have the precision required, which here is abbreviated D as in Delta. And you see the formula here. Again, there's going to be some squaring. So when you write the formula, make sure you have that little hat sign. I tend to bring in a, a variety of scenario to negotiate if needed with my stakeholders, what will be an acceptable number. You can see here that as your process 
performance improve, i.e. your proportional defect gets low, and you have no high level of precision required, it will require more data than a process which actually is not performing so well. So you have a high frequency of defect and your precision tolerance might be quite loose. Obviously, that cuts down the number of data points required. Just appreciate that there are some of these things you may need to negotiate or take into account. Hopefully, your SME will be able to give you a decent existing proportion of defect. But even if you want to take a pinch of salt, you know, they say, oh, it's 20%. And you say, well, what if it's 10? What is 30? And then you set your precision, as I say, as three, just to see what would happen should you be an actual different proportion. And you see, it has a huge impact. So this is where sometimes people say, well, you know what? Let's even take a smaller sample. And if somebody asks you, what's the magic number for the minimal sample size? The answer is 32. I'll tell you one day why. But if you get between 32 and 36 data point, maybe to get that initial proportion and to get a feel for that precision that you need, that might be something that you can agree with your stakeholders. Okay. I hope this is useful. If you have any questions or, or suggestion, again, drop me a note and I'll try to answer your question.